give you a huge round of applause for Pooja Bhatt. Thank you for being here. Pooja, thank you so much for being here. Over to you. Actor, producer, director, production designer. My God. Then we'll have a book only uh, with the introduction. Get it right. I got it. Thank so you. do it. Okay. There's a lot of other stuff also. Avid reader. Avid reader. Yes. And here I am reading a critic's book out. Correct. How the mighty have fallen. <laughs> True. <laughs> but you've chosen a chapter that you find comfortable. This mic holding is going to be the big task. Maybe, maybe, yes. Okay, here goes. Name, place, animal thing, and uh, Republic of Bandra, where I hail from, coincidentally. I come from Chembur, to borrow a blind from Bill Bison. I don't need a mic, do I need a mic? Do I need a mic? Okay. I come from Chembur, to borrow a line from Bill Bryson, somebody has to. Bryson, a much-loved author of non-fiction, profitably amuses the public because he belongs to the moi, a congested industrial relatively beat out in America. I enjoy no such literary luck. I don't belong to Chembur. I know three bars in the neighborhood, which is roughly as many times I've been there in twice as many years. The guy at the corner shop won't know my face, let alone call me by my first name. I don't know my neighbors. At least no one I know or hang out with lives in the area. I usually go where they are. They mostly remain where they live. For weeks, most don't leisurely hop beyond three kilometers radar from the center of their posh flat. You come down to Juhu, I suggest. Too far, dude, I get to hear. Nothing is too far or too, close, or too close for me. I rush without a thought where the wind blows, where the nights are sweet adolescent, and the company great. Kulaba seems as much a friendly neighborhood to me as Bandra, though they're almost at either ends of the city. Ganesh at Busaba, behind the Taj, is as much a personal bartender for me as Vivian at Zenzi in Bandra. Both know that the odd free smiles are privileges exclusively reserved for young women, but the few frequent male drunks who leave behind the extra tip deserve this honor as well. They make me feel at home because they see me often enough. Where I live, I realized, freed me to find my city wherever I wanted to, over a warm Tomato, potato, 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 soup on SP Road, or a greasy paneer burji at Bari Mia. Sometimes, you know what is almost as easy? A stroll across to Koriga Park in Pune. Though Chembur isn't quite its nearest suburb, as many might assume. A biker whizzing past my area did stop me once to ask for the way to that Maharashtran town. We didn't know each other. I don't think he meant that as a cruel joke. Yet, I'm not a prisoner to my PIN code. A decade ago, I didn't know better. I'd moved to Mumbai from the political captain of India's Nuvo Rish, where you spin a murky Benz, before you, therefore you are. And the Christmas tree of the opposite gender, still putting on her lipstick next to your seat, comes free with a swanky new car. Or so the fellow who will never own a Benz thinks anyway. Mumbai is relatively sober that way. Yes, they still ask the intrusively Indian question about what do you do the first minute everyone meets anyone. One banker is hardly different from the other industrialist. The small car they both drive may be less for reasons of economy and more out of concern for ecology or sheer comfort on a road that has just enough space for a fancy motorbike. Clothes could be one-way knockoffs. Cell phone is snobbery of the school kid. Affluence sits easy on Mumbai's small head. My 70 rupee flip-flops, unless at a nightclub, or your cheapest cell phone almost everywhere matters less. I've also stayed with my parents at about an age I could have been a parent myself. Nobody's judged me. Until some friends, acquaintances, or excuses for both have casually asked, where do you live? Usually your face, oh, two drop, a few eyes lift up. Chembur? Wow. Really? Really? You get the drift. That would have, uh, they would have sized you up the same way for, oh, Washi? Thane? Nerul? Pawai? Really? Judgment's complete. These are new surnames. Postal address is the only urban caste, your residential coordinates being a fair sum of all your noticeable parts, defining you almost wholly by vintage income, sociology, aspiration, and your engagement with the city itself. An NGO type blathers on and on to me at a party about the state of the Naxalites in Chhattisgarh and how none of these rich varieties care for the level of discrimination in these parts. I step out with him to take an auto. Where do you stay, he asks. Chembur he is and sniggers to my face. There's no question of getting defensive about yourself, unless in the company of fine intellect. But a neighborhood, even if you don't know its short, uh, shortest violins, is still yours. A home, even if you can't tell the switch of the fans from the light bulbs, is no one else's. I gently defend my Chem's corner once in a while. Its streets leafier than Varsova's, 
its location closer to both breadths of the city. Hey, there's a new freeway that gets you without any traffic right onto Victoria Terminus in 13 minutes flat from my house. Chembur is the best kept secret of Bombay. Yeah, sure, I may be on logic. But try convincing this friend of mine who's just moved into the city and who probably makes enough to afford a lovely space of his own in a well-maintained housing complex in a relatively virgin suburb, paying mortgage that won't burn a hole in his pocket. Try again. Well, he doesn't quite bust his ass off as all, all through the year to someone, so someone can judge him for where he lives, you know. He aspires for social acceptance and respect among his peers rather than a transiently better quality of life. He hardly has time to hang out at bars or restaurants that make his expensive neighborhood cool. He rarely, if ever, goes out at night or parties in general. He has only early mornings, early starts, long days and flights to catch every other day. But he will now happily withdraw half his salary, given the new lease, to keep this place driving up rents even further in the same area every year. Fair enough. Equality is a modern myth. Prejudices, however harmless, are innately human. Either way, someone will eventually capitalize. This is how the lack in Bombay turns into the new crore, and 34 of those khokhas are paid up front by an NRI show off for a seven floor, four bedroom apartment in a city that he does not even live in. That fellow coughed up about a lack for every square foot of a piece of sky by the sea. When bookings for that building had started in the early 90s, the going rate was 7,000. Many more pay fair fractions of such amounts among the in infrastructural chaos of Mumbai, still untouched by basic civil civic amenities, let alone those expected of posh, expensive localities. Nothing remains real about estate anymore. I write this from a neighborhood I moved into, that the superstar of my father's generation, Dilip Kumar, and of my own, Sanjay Dutt, both few yards away call home. I shell out a bomb for a kopchi the size and look of my kitchen in Chembur. But on a night of serious low esteem, I may consider a comeback line after I've introduced myself. I'm from Chembur. Chembur? I'm also from Pali Hill. You cast this pig. My place is dingy, tiny, leaky, but hey, that you don't know, you know Bandra and that too, Pali Hill? Chalo, at least you can buy yourself a new surname. This type of Sankritization appears easier to attain. And I went through that first chapter. Now you bloody well clap for me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Pooja. Thank you very much. Uh, so, so Pooja, at this point in time, I'm going to request you, to, because we're going to use this completely as a plug <laughs> for Mayank and the book. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, the author Mayank that, and, of course, which parts of the book you liked? Mayank has apparently written down also words that he really requests uh, you to use. Uh, riveting, engrossing, you had me at hello. I don't know. Mayank really, uh, this is ridiculous. But yeah, so she, she could just tell us uh, the things you really enjoyed. I, I must say that I kind of, uh, I enjoyed this one in particular because I think that, I mean, Mayank, I've, I've seen him always get that Chembur reaction. And I think I, I actually was one of those people who said Chembur. And Neha is still one of those people who says, really, Mayank Chembur. But you're right, it is one of, I think, Bombay's best kept secrets. And I think that you get the best butter chicken in town off the right behind that. That's not mentioned in this chapter. And uh, I think that, um, I actually, I, was, I, I read this for the first time last night in between releasing six promos for uh, a totally kind of exploitative song called Pani Pani and uh, the kind of movies that he, he disses completely, by the way. And, uh, a kind of, uh, uh, you know, a, a shoot where I was going completely or I am reading this chapter and saying, will I be able to kind of read articulately and not kind of sound completely garbled to all these intellectual people here. And then I'm, I didn't really see pin, but when I was reading it right now, hey, it reads well. And I can say one thing about him, I don't know about the book, but I can give, say one thing is that as far as a guy is concerned, with all his flaws, I'd give him a four star. Whoa. <laughs> Man, you have passed the test. Super. Thank you so much, Pooja. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the reading. Thank you very much. We have a huge round of applause, please. Yes, ma'am, you do get to quit the book. For more news and gossip, don't forget to subscribe to Bollywood Helpline.